So, I've been working like a fool, man. Done at least uh, eight days out of the last nine days. You know, uh, providing uh, quality medicine to uh, people who, uh, who need it. Um, who should, like, ideally be getting it from the government, but I'm also getting to share the magic of Changa with people, and um, it's really, uh, it really gives me great pleasure to see how much um, healing and meaning comes from it. Um, and, uh, yeah, but anyways, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, something a little different. I want to talk about how I believe that uh, in the West, um, so, you know, America, you know, West, North America primarily, so America, Canada, um, you know, I live in Canada, so, you know, as a, from a first-person perspective, all I can really uh, comment on is Canada, but um, I see many of the same uh, systems, and I have especially seen... Um, a surgeons of uh, this desire to be enslaved, um, or not enslaved, but dependent on the government. You know, stimulus checks, all that, like, um, <clears throat> I believe society and the government wants to condition us to be victims. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is the more victimized you are, or the more victimized you perceive yourself as being, the more you have to rely on, say, you know, government-provided uh, health care and uh, counseling and stuff like that. Um, and so I, 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 I tend to believe that the government um, and, like, the medical system in Canada is, especially BC, is really like a democratic socialist type operation, you know, similar to what you see in Switzerland um, and other uh, other countries, um, uh, European countries primarily. Uh, free healthcare, um, but the thing is, the healthcare is absolutely god awful, and it likes to manufacture more issues than <coughs> it actually helps because it keeps that wheel turning and. When that wheel is turning and everyone's shackled to it, you have repeat customers, that's for sure. And when it comes to, uh, like, look at drug addiction, um, opioid addiction is uh, something that uh, almost no user going back 50, 60 years escapes because even back then they're putting them on methadone. The thing about methadone is that you are, same as Suboxone now, uh, you're reliant on it. 100%. You need it every day. If you don't get it each day, you will go into withdrawal. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of, you know, just mounds, mounds of evidence that shows this stuff is tremendously addictive and bad for you. And, uh, can lead to an early grave in many situations. Um, and, um, you know, the... A lot of the people who are prescribed Oxycontin, uh, they were, uh, you know, kind of blue-collar workers, uh, even white-collar workers, who injured themselves, became addicts, and then um, had to deal with the government and, you know, the pharmaceutical companies, giving them Suboxone to get off of it if they even could. And, um, you know, then as they go down the ladder, you know, they require government housing, government payments. And, you know, I have no bones about saying I am on disability, um, and I'm also on methadone. And the thing is, yeah, like with methadone and those uh, maintenance opioids, it is the ideal product for any corporation. You have to come every day or you go into withdrawal, and you feel like death. Simple as that. And that essentially causes people to relapse because, <coughs> like, two different reasons with Suboxone. And methadone, um, or sorry, two respective reasons for each. Um, with, uh, with methadone, uh, you can use, and then you can uh, 
go back on methadone, and uh, depending on what you use, if it's something like fentanyl, they'll probably kick all the methadone off your receptors. Um, then, uh, yeah, you, you essentially uh, have to get back to balancing yourself out on methadone if you're using something like fentanyl. Um, <clears throat> if you're using something like uh, um, heroin or Dilaudid or whatever, you know, it'll throw off your methadone and you'll have to go up, 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 up on your dose and then stabilize, 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 and that takes a long time to stabilize. And then there's Suboxone, that's like even more pristine uh, for these companies when it comes to uh, money-making prospects because uh, with Suboxone, if you uh, have any opioids in your system when you take Suboxone, you go into precipitated withdrawal. Precipitated withdrawal is the most painful thing not only I've experienced, but anyone on this planet can experience because like, it is withdrawal times like a thousand. The only way to cut through it is fentanyl. So what happens? Fentanyl use. How do you get back on Suboxone after fentanyl use? It is a very long, hard, tedious process. It takes, you know, well, at least a week. Um, these are ways of keeping us sort of completely shackled to these services. And, um, like, honestly, who is benefiting in the long run from this? You know, uh, like the... The government, uh, not too long ago, uh, were celebrating cigarettes and stuff like that. You know, just, just ways for us to spend our money on things we really don't need to function, and convincing us that these are imperative to function. And, I mean, now the cigarettes is, is kind of a polar opposite effect, where, um, you, uh, you are guilted by the government, uh, into trying to quit if you don't smoke and then being reliant on nicotine patches provided by the pharmaceutical uh, de social uh, socialist democratic uh, um, uh, uh, programs that are provided i mean if you go into a pharmacy here and you're a smoker they will give you like 400 dollars worth of nicotine gum and patches and stuff like that and that stuff has such an abysmally small success rate it is pathetic I tried quitting with that stuff many times. It just pissed me off and made me want to smoke even more. Um, <clears throat> there's just a <clears throat> so many ways to uh, you know manufacture this victimhood, this dependency, this inability to be free, while operating under the auspice, the pretense that by making these decisions you are exercising your freedom. Um, and, uh, yeah, just to circle back to what I was saying about disability, because I am on disability. You know, I have the most um, dangerous mental health condition, major depressive disorder. Um, and uh, I also have, uh, you know, six plus pain conditions. Um, I've been on disability for a long time, and it's um, absolutely absurd. Uh, say if I was to find a place I could rent in the city, which has some of the ha highest uh, housing rates in all of... Uh, North America um, for $900 for like say uh, like uh, a one bedroom suite which is impossible by the way in my city I would have literally only enough for, to spend on 50, 50 bucks on groceries for the rest of the month really this is you know it's like you know you give an inch they take a mile. That's how these people like to work. Um, and I'm not saying, like, you know, I'm not going to rag on everything the government's done. It's not all awful, but for the most part, what I see is awful and manipulative and exploitative and uh, atrocious um, and uh, self-serving. You know, I could go on, but um, one thing that being on stuff like disability causes and this is uh, one of the most important things I think I've learned, um, especially when it came to adjusting my attitude about judging people. Being on disability is pretty much asking people to sell drugs. It really is. Because, <clears throat> as I said, if you, if you are lucky enough to find a place for 900 which, good luck with that. Good luck with that. You have 50 bucks 
you have or you have enough left for fifty bucks a month for groceries or fifty bucks a week for the rest of the month for groceries and nothing else, no amenities. So they are, you know, in this weird um, uh, sort of fashion of like uh, like uh, just pinballing on, like it is getting you to fall lower than you should need to to support yourself and to feel like you are fulfilling those needs that you know have been predicated to you your whole life as the necessity to live as a free human being in this society and um i hate i hate i hate having to you know just Get that, get my tongue nice and nice and dry so I can just get that government boot and just. Yeah, please don't take away my $1,300 a month. There's no way to live, man. Um, and um, I get why people on these, like, really just pathetic sums of money uh, are so prone to stuff like drug addiction. Because why would you want, like, if you think you can't understand addiction, picture this. <laughs> Living on $1,300 a month, and um, maybe you live in an SRO, a government housing facility, which is rampant with drug addiction and uh, just complete depravity and chaos. Um, they're just essentially taking all the misfits they don't want in society and shoving them in one building. Now imagine they shove you in there too and then ask you for 600 for rent. And then that leaves you with $700 for the rest of the month. So you get your groceries and you have 300 left. You know. What, what would look to you at that point more enticing? falling in line and doing that and hoping you can find a job where you can work two days a week max before they start taking that money from your check or doing hard drugs so you can neutralize the hard harsh frigid reality of your painful existence this is what I'm talking about when I say that this system is creating criminals. It is just, there's this ongoing wheel, just cycling, cycling, cycling. And it's not getting any closer to advancing into something that actually helps people. And I think that is sore and really just deplorable. Um, I believe that you know, personally, politically, there should be no regulatory groups anywhere. There should only be unions. There should only be groups of like-minded people. You know, say like pe disabled people divvying up money between one another. You know, um, but nothing. No, no offices to. You know, police that and regulate that, and another office to police and regulate that office. It's a redundancy. And it only exists to essentially allow, you know, just, just greedy people to profit. It's sick. It's really sad. It really is. Um, and uh, I just, I just, you know, I don't feel like I can participate in a society where. I mean, those at the top are collecting the vast majority of the wealth, like so much more than any of us could imagine. And just the top point, you know, like one percent. It's it's absolutely absurd, and uh, I uh, I also don't want to become just a corporate pawn. I do not want to be complicit in any way to the games these evil corporations like to play because they are very mean, callous, unmerciful games. They have no quarter these fuckers. Certainly not for the, the environment. 
And like, uh, look at, uh, like, I'll give you for example, <coughs> the environment. You know how my government's dealing with it? Well, charging, uh, 15 cents for a plastic bag and, uh, 20 cents for a paper bag. And uh, also giving you plastic straws that people throw out anyways. Plastic straws that fall apart as soon as they get wet, you know? Like, <clears throat> it's, <clears throat> it's, it's like obviously, so obviously, a, a, a ruse that is like built on the foundation of instilling guilt in others. You look at stuff like carbon taxes. How much of that is really going back to the environment and how much is just ending up in pockets of oil moguls? I don't know the answer, but I'm I, I probably don't even want to know. It'd be disheartening to know. So yeah, that's why I feel I really just had to drive home that point of how we are conditioned to be automatons in a system laboring under illusion who fear what is being demonized and what has no real hazard to us and these are all methods of keeping us in our little boxes so we can remain accounted for and I ask you to dare to step out of line do it and you know, fucking sell drugs, become a junkie. No, I'm just kidding. But, like, you know, do what you need to do to truly liberate yourself from this oppressive idea of freedom. Yes, this oppressive idea of, oh, I deserve this, this, and that because I am a free Canadian uh, or American. Um, <clears throat> you know, abandon ideas of patriotism because... They are just, you know, a, a, a hip, or hopscotch. <laughs> I'm so bad at these. Hop, skip, and a jump away from uh, nationalism. Essentially, you are like, why, why you, uh, you, why do you um, support your uh, local uh, sports team? Just because they're good? Yeah, doubt it. I mean, it's just another way of. Getting you to go, oh, my turf, my turf, my turf, my turf. When really, what has these, what have these lines in the map that have been around for so long, containing us, causing us this this inextricable, inextricable angst towards the rest of the world, what is that doing for us? You know, that this is the whole, you know, Henry Thompson, you know why they call it the American dream? Because, oh, sorry, George Carlin. You know why they call it the American dream? Because you have to be truly asleep to believe it. Don't be a victim to the system. Don't be a victim, period. I could say I'm a victim in many ways. Um, I think in some of the worst ways, which I think I'll get into a little bit more in some of my other videos. But at the same token, um, you don't have to be. Just be aware of how victims are manufactured and how none of us are exempt from that because any one of us no matter how hard of a worker you are could get injured any day now if you're in the states you know that injury could uh leave you in debt for the rest of your life if you're in canada that means you will be spending inordinate amounts of time in hospitals and counseling groups Stuff that really is just getting you to spin your wheels more and more and more and more and more. To so grow more and more unhappy. I think, uh, you know, depression, ADD, all this stuff is generated by our society. ADD, school. That's what happens when you take kids who are naturally rambunctious and you force them to sit down for eight hours. Depression, because... Cynicism is promoted not just by society, but by culture. Like, you know, one thing I really agree with with David Foster Wallace is his take on satirical comedy and how that is promoting cynicism, getting people to take 
real life apathy less seriously. You know, see things from an objective centrist point of view if you can, and then go from there. You know, that's what I try to do. Um, but anyways, I think I think that's enough for now. But I hope you. Uh, enjoyed this. I hope this made you think a bit because I think this is very important. I've wanted to say this for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, please, uh, if you made it this far, please do like, comment, subscribe. I would really, 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 really like that. Really like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, you know what? I will, uh, I, I'm currently debating whether I should share um, the, the, by far the darkest way um, the system has affected me, but it's, uh, it's uh, fairly personal, it's fairly hurtful, and it um, led to me uh, dying, almost not coming back. Uh, but um, I don't know, if you guys want to show me some support, um, maybe I would be willing, but uh, you know, this is like a fairly tender thing for me, so. Anyways, I hope this helped. Uh, you know, jog your thoughts a bit. Um, I'm sure all of you have something to say on this matter. And uh, I hope these are the kind of videos you can watch where you can talk along as I'm talking. If you disagree with me, you can disagree with me to your screen. Preferably, I'd like you to disagree in the comments because I'd actually like to discuss this stuff. But anyways. Synthetic Knox of Spiritual Shaman. Sign up. I gotta work tomorrow. Bye-bye.